day has finally come where we are getting the bagler out of the shed since we bought it and we're going to put it through the workshop and service it all ready for possibly next week okay we might be leaving it a little bit short at least it's not the day before we want to use it let's get it out of the shed and get down the workshop this is our new holland 377 we bought this at auction a couple of months ago for two thousand pounds plus a commission so two thousand two hundred plus the VAT. Now, I, for its condition, I don't think it's too bad a baler. Now, we haven't gone through it as yet because, well, we haven't had time and we're possibly going to be making hay next week. So, no time, no time like the present. At least it's not the day before. Now, I have loved balers for a very long time. When I was growing up, I always loved balers and we never actually had a baler on the farm ourselves. Old man always got in contractors to do the baling and all that sort of work. So I always dreamt of owning my own baler. Now, I first used a conventional baler over customers back probably when I was about 19, which is an old international baler. I hated it. It was horrible. And I thought, no, it's, it's down to you. It's got to be better on the market. Then when I was about 22, I ended up buying my own John Deere 346 baler, which is a really nice baler. Really, really liked that. And then... I moved more into landscaping and fencing, sold the baler, bits and pieces, so got rid of that. So now we've got our own farm, we needed a baler, so I bought this New Holland 377, which I've used the New Holland 376 of my father-in-law's, and I was very happy with that. So hopefully we're on to a winner. Right, let's get it hitched up and get it down the yard. Right, so I've got it hitched up for the coyote. She won't be being, we won't be baling with the coyote. We'll be baling, hopefully, with the Ford 5610, which Michael is in there. Working away on it, look. But I'm going to take him off that so we can service this baler today. Okay, it's going to get all the covers open and I'm going to have a good clean out in here, I think, to start with. Uh, get all that cleaned out up through there to start with. And then I'm going to focus on the knotters back here. Open that up. My favourite place. Now, uh, they're either the most amazing thing in the world or they're your biggest headache in the world. I love them. I think they're absolutely, truly amazing. Now, knotters have hardly changed design in the last 50 years. They're still pretty much exactly the same, but I'll explain through them a little bit more later on. I'll get more cleaned up first. <laughs> I wish I'd done this inside because it is blooming hot out here. But we're making progress. Oh, yes. So it is looking a lot, lot cleaner. A lot better. We can actually see red paintwork now. And so just gone, obviously, you saw me with the Hoover and the, pulling it all apart. But now yeah, I've got some brushes here. So these little steel chainsaw brushes are absolutely mint. They're brilliant. That's a steel lawnmower brush. And I've got my Kubota brush that I got at Llama. Right, let's do these knotters. There we go. Look at that, that's much better. So that's as clean as I want to make them. So in here, you'll see that the cord is coming up through there. It's just been threaded, so that's where it'll sit. As the bale has only just been tied, you see the old knots down there look, on the bale that's still in the chamber, which we'll leave in. And then, so that there is the bill hook. So that is what ties the knot down there. So that bit of cord that comes up even above it as that comes around, another bit will go in underneath it. And then as it spins around, that little sort of bit you see on the top will lift up for one string to go in under. And then as it goes around, it will tighten to a nice little knot and end up looking like that there. So yeah, I think that's an amazing bit of engineering from what, 1950s probably, I think they probably came up with them to start with. And they're still using them pretty much exactly the same today in big modern bailers. So one thing I did notice, cleaning all this out, is those two little grease nipples in there, which are very seldom seen because they're normally covered in crap. Uh, well, well, you couldn't even see them, so I don't think they've been greased for quite a while in there. But six grease nipples on these all together. One, two, three, four, five, six. And obviously you've got ones back here on your shaft as well, coming through. 
yeah winner and then the hay dogs in behind there so those are there facing down into your chamber into your bale chamber and as your sort of plunger comes up through with you pushing your hay up through they drop down and hold your hay sort of your bale back while it goes back to get the next bit to bring back in again now it's had a replacement spring on there at some point because it's red and those two are blue or these two have been replaced perhaps those two but they're, they're all fine that's all working all right so that's good another sort of common problem with these are these springs in here so that is what keeps your tension on your plate inside that ties the knot so sometimes these will crack in around here and i've had a scrape in there now just to see if there's any problems there but they all look absolutely fine so good news obviously there isn't a great deal that happens here until it actually ties the knot whereas the rest of the balers they're going all around nothing happens here until this spur wheel here so as the bale comes down through that goes tick 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 round and then that will trip your baler like that to tie your knot so then that makes this over here make this go round and then that goes tick 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 in a matter of couple seconds and it knots tied and then that will drop back down drop back down then as that spins around again to go onto your next knot so that all that mechanism only turns when it actually ties the knot absolutely amazing love it all right let's have a look in the core chamber in here a second all right so we've got probably well probably enough to do our bales just on those two but i do believe it came with two spare rolls ah, there we go so they are there. So we'll pop them in and tie them together as well. Because then your cord comes up through here. And then along here. But down through there, through that bobbin. Into this bobbin. Down through underneath there, which is your needle guard. To stop your needles being damaged. And then you thread them up through the needles and tie them off back here. As your needle comes up round, takes your cord up through. Obviously had a replacement needle at some point because there's different colours on there as well. A comes up through on your pickup reel in there, comes up through to this chamber, and these here go like fork it out that way to push it back towards the bale chamber. And I didn't actually notice this, but Mike noticed it earlier on when he came out and look. I've actually got one that's broken in there, so need to look at getting that sorted because it's not just it's not just a needle. I don't know what you call that prong, um, fork maybe. It's the actual bracket on the top one as well there. So that will still do its job. But like Mike said, you might get a bendy bale because it's not pushing it through evenly. Up with this one, I mean, there should be a PTO shaft and there's a little wheel there, look. That little wheel fits in down there into that hole just to take the weight. So Mike's been nagging me every day for the last fortnight saying, when are we going to do the baler? When are we going to do the baler? Hey? There's a yell. <laughs> Just, what? A, just better than dragging it out the edge the day before you want to use it. This is very true. So what do you think, Slim Shady? What do I think? I think I'll be better off walking away. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen one of these since the end of the last century. <laughs> uh, this is my mic's knowledge is going to come into Now then, Mike, have I done the right thing or wrong thing by cleaning it? Well, you're always better to clean it off. I agree. A technician did tell, tell me once upon a time that you should never, never clean a baler too thoroughly because you'll put it out of balance. <sighs> I've just presumed he was a lazy technician. It depends on what you call clean. Now, you cleaned it dry. If yeah. you clean it wet, that will fuck it up. Very true. But uh, clean it dry, leave it clean. Yeah. Ideally, like everything else, when you've got plenty of time and all the rest of it in this wonderful world, you finish your baler, you put it away, you make sure that you've any faults that you've had during the season, you sort out, you grease everything, check oils so that everything's ready to go when the time is right. In practice, that never happens to Because <laughs> you've always got someone else to do. Indeed. Because it's like he's greasing up all share of them, so he'd grease for a day or three. No, I said the one in, I said on the camera just now, the one in there, he couldn't even bloody see the grease nipple on the inside. Oh, it's just so he's already found a problem there. Unbelievable. That. Well, shall we see if Mike's found anything I didn't? Let's grab him. Off he found him, Magic. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. So, Nothing horrendous. Oh, that's, yeah, that's right. Let's start at the front then. 
Well, slip clutches ought to be checked before, but never get done. Basically, if you don't know what the settings is, measure your settings first, take your clutch apart, clean all the rust off it so that the disc isn't seized, then stick it back together with the same settings, roughly. Do you think we should do that? Can I be asked? <laughs> <laughs> Let's tuck it in and see, shall we? <laughs> well... That sounds like an evening job, but... Yeah, it is a bit like... <laughs> you got some tip axe for that, too. Yeah, well, that's just to mark up you. To time your baler, you've got, obviously, you get your crank gear. Mm -hmm. And then you've got three little sounder punch marks there. Oh, yeah, so they line up, yeah. For your nodders. And then you've got two little marks there for your packer arm. Ah, so you know he's all in time. So you know he's all in time. You've got a... Oh, your clicker on your bell counter. Yeah, your counter isn't counting anymore. No. And you got, like I say, you've got one clutch, main clutch there, and you've got another one up there for you. Your gearbox is right in there, is he? Well, the gearbox, you've got a little oil level. One on your main. You've got a breather at the top, breather filler there, and your little level plug is down there. Oh, right, yeah. And that's all right. I haven't checked it yet, but you can see. As a crude rule of thumb, if all you wouldn't piss it out, it's still in the gearbox. Very true. The same goes for that. There'll be a little level plug around the side. A little one in there, yeah. All right, yeah. But you haven't bailed your needles up yet, so. No. There is a, a ram stop that stops that stops stops you build. But stops you bailing your yeah. <laughs> not bailing your nipples, bailing your needles. <laughs> You've got one. So the feeder time. Packer time there. Yeah. Missing. Which I've just ordered. Just ordered. But I haven't ordered one of those. I've managed to find one of them. So hopefully the centres are the same on the bolts. So you'll be able to match that one up to the other side. So then we have two then. Because you may end up with a bail. Because Mike pulled the bail out. It might. Be part of the you can see he's like that not square on the end where he should be that square so that could be the reason why he's doing that because he's only got one feeder tie nice your little cam track rulers which sit in there they mm -hmm. ain't all right it's just one little wayward oh yeah one little way shouldn't tie. make too much of a difference now pain in the ass to do it because when you undo this lot or slack them off everything. just just like to snap it off yeah and everything goes south and another sticker back there Mikey yeah it's just a they've had a little bit of a welding session there at some time it oh, works yeah. so yeah protocol now is to get it all greased up do the things we need to do I'll finish yeah. cleaning it and um, little height wheel could go yeah. back on height wheel goes there yeah yeah, because we're not going on the road with it, so you might as well stay on once he's on. Um, Lovely. But she is now all clean. And Mike has gone round everything, greased everything up. He even pulled the knotters up round and sharpened the blades on them as well, which is ideal, so the string cuts nice and cleanly. I've still got to put in the spare string in the bottom and join them together. But in a minute, we're going to show you manually how the strings tie, because we actually might pull the bail out in the end. There's your bail chamber up through there, look. So we're going to tie them off in a second. Rich, is, Rich came back yesterday afternoon, so he's cleaned out all of this. So that's all looking nice and smart. I welded that in there this morning, just because there's a little bit of a lip there, where obviously someone had caught that at some point and bent it up round. So I bent it down and welded that back in. And I've also put on some fresh rubbers on the flywheel housing, just to make that look a bit better. And plenty of grease on the transport bar. Here come the needles up through, thread the string. So I'll be now threading it over the bill hook. Clean the string out at the same time while we're here. Go. Just see those knots there now, look. We'll top those soon. 
Right, so that has now re-threaded the cord. So you can see that's coming over here on the guides there. And then in over on top of the billock. So unfortunately this bail counter is dumb. It doesn't work anymore. Obviously every time that comes up and trips to tie the knot, that pulls the clicker up to count how many bales is done on it. Right, so Mike's now going to pull the cord out the back of the bale, imitating the way a the bale would be pushing the cord back through. Josh is up there pretending to be the tractor turning the flywheel. You've got to make the sounds as well, Mike. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> brum, brum, brum. <laughs> well, I think he do that anyway, doesn't he? <laughs> and I'm going to record the billock so you can hopefully see the knot being tied. And uh, here comes the needle. Go ahead and oob the top of the billock. And then the billet will spin round. There she goes. The peak will open, allowing a piece of cord to go through the middle of the knot. There we are. And then the knife will cut it off. And there's your knot. And there's our knot back. Our little baby bale. Mike's just gonna run it up, make sure it doesn't shit itself. Which it shouldn't. He's gonna work out the controls in the kite now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There she is. She's a whirling. <laughs> so there we have one baler ready to bale hay well fingers crossed like mike said works fine in the yard get out in the field things can happen anyway we're looking forward to baling for sure there's no getting away from it cannot wait right we'll see you when we do that or well probably something before that got another tractor to show you soon anyway please subscribe see you soon bye cheers